From full English breakfast, to angry hermit, to dirty kitty, Dex and Magic have had some, mm, creative names. Thankfully, Aristocrats is a straightforward archetype that's been a personal favorite of mine. Aristocrats is a deck archetype that rose to prominence during Innistrad Standard. The original deck used small, cheap creatures with enter or leaves the battlefield effects in combination with the sacrifice outlets Falconrath Aristocrat or Cartel Aristocrat, in addition to creatures that cause loss of life whenever a creature dies, such as Blood Artist or Zulaport Cutthroat. The game plan of this archetype is to chip in for damage using cheap, efficient creatures in the early game, and then use those creatures for damage, sacrifice fodder, and extra value to close out in the mid to late game, usually with some form of reanimation to double up on those sacrifices. It's more of a death by a thousand cuts than one specific combo. The power of the deck comes from the synergistic engine that you can build. It's easy to set up a game state where you sacrifice a creature for an effect, draw a card for a creature dying, ping the opponent for a damage as you gain a life, and then get a token for sacrificing a creature. Once you've cleared off your own board, reanimate the creatures you just sacrificed and rinse and repeat until you can close out the game. Although the color combinations can shift, they're firmly rooted in black, with white, red, and or green as additional colors depending on the variant. In current standard, Rakdos Sacrifice could be an up-to-date take on the archetype. Cauldron familiar with Witch's Oven provides sacrifice triggers for Mayhem Devil and Judith the Scourge Diva, who turn the loop into extra damage, all while Midnight Reaper keeps your hand full by drawing you cards. A Mardu version of the deck might use cards like Tesa Karloff to double up on death triggers, while Annex, Harden in the Forge, and Luminous Broodmoth to provide sacrifice fodder while Cruel Celebrant closes out the game. In Battle for Zendikar standard, Four Color Rally was a more control-centric version of the deck that used the card Rally the Ancestors to reanimate creatures like Elvish Visionary to draw cards, and Sidisi's Faithful to sacrifice and to clear out troublesome creatures. Nantuko Husk was a free sacrifice outlet and beater, while Zulaport Cutthroat would ping in for the last bits of damage. A take on Rally the Ancestors that goes all in on the Aristocrats angle has also been ported to Modern and Pioneer, using Stitcher Supplier to mill additional creatures into the yard, Voice of Resurgence to provide additional sacrifice fodder, Blood Artist to drain your opponent, and Return to the Ranks as an additional reanimation spell. In Commander, the deck has several different variants depending on the color identity. Examples of Commanders include Ayara, First of Lochtwain for monocolored, Marin of Clan Neltoth, Judith the Scourge Diva, and Tesa Karla for two color, and finally, Nethroi Apex of Death, Sekuar Deathkeeper, and Korvald Fey Cursed King for three color. Black is central to these decks for pingers like Zulaport Cutthroat, Blood Artist, Falconrath Noble, and Vindictive Vampire. Free sacrifice outlets like Carrion Feeder, Viscera Seer, and Yeheni Undying Partisan help the engine to get going. Black also has access to a number of mass reanimation spells, like Rise of the Dark Realms, Wake the Dead, Living Death, and Thrilling Encore. Throw in the format All-Star Grey Merchant of Ashfidel, and you have yourself a path to victory. Since the deck can often pick up a token sub-theme, Green adds access to Doubling Season, Primal Vigor, and Parallel Lives. Add in a token producer like Avenger of Zendikar, or Izoni Thousand Eyes, to keep the sacrifice fodder coming. Protean Hulk shines especially well here, since so many of the pieces have low converted mana cost, and with multiple sacrifice outlets, it's easy to cause its trigger to go off. White, on the other hand, adds additional token synergies and producers with cards like Anointed Procession, Requiem Angel, and Alenda the Dusk Rose. Revlar, Karmic Guide, and Sun Titan add creature-based reanimation while helping provide additional bodies on the battlefield. With so many creatures entering the battlefield, Red can add Perforos to quickly take over a game. Mayhem Devil and Judith the Scourge Diva are also incredibly powerful here since you can direct the damage to any target. Although the deck can be found in current and past standards, Pioneer, Modern, and Commander, the deck tends to shine outside of Commander because the additional life total can make it difficult to close out a game. Much like several other decks, Graveyard Hate in the form of Rest in Peace or Leyland of the Void absolutely wreck the game plan. Hushbringer can also bring the deck to a standstill by shutting down creatures' death triggers. 
Since the deck relies on putting together an engine of several different cards, single target removal like Putrefy or Mortify can quickly keep the deck in check. Although it's not a top tier deck, it's reasonably cheap to put together for most expensive formats and can appeal to the Johnny and all of us. I personally have a commander deck under Sekuar Deathkeeper with Living Death as the hidden commander that's been one of my all-time favorites. Check out the link in the description if you want to test it out.